Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video is part of operating systems video course and today's topic is operating system structure. A modern operating system is large and complex. If it is to be functioned properly and be modified easily then it must be engineered very carefully. A common approach is to partition the task into small components or modules rather than having one monolithic system. Each of these modules should be well defined with inputs, outputs and functions. Following are the different operating system structures. Simple structure, layered approach, micro kernel, modules and hybrid systems. Simple structure. Many operating systems do not have well defined structures. Such systems started as small, simple and then grew beyond their original scope. And the two most example of simple structure operating systems are MS-DOS and Unix. Let's talk about the MS-DOS. It was originally designed and implemented by a few people who had no idea that it would become so popular. It was written to provide the most functionality in the least space. So it was not carefully divided into modules. In MS-DOS, the interface lay and levels of functionality are not well separated. As you can see in the image, application program can directly access the ROM BIOS device drivers. For example, application programs are able to access the basic I.O. routines to write directly to the display and write disk drives. And such freedoms leave MS-DOS vulnerable to errant or malicious programs causing the entire system crashes when the user program fails. Intel 8088 for which it was written provides no dual mode and no hardware protection and the designer of MS-DOS had no choice but to leave the base hardware accessible. Another example of limited structuring is the original Unix operating system. Like MS-DOS, Unix initially was limited by hardware functionality. It consists of two separable parts, the kernel and the system programs. The kernel is further separated into a series of interfaces and device drivers which have been added and expanded over the years as Unix has evolved. The kernel provides the file system, CPU scheduling, memory management and other operating system functions through system calls. Taken in sum that is an enormous amount of functions to be combined into one level and this monolithic structure was difficult to implement and maintain. There is very little overhead in the system call or in communication with the kernel. A system can be made modular in many ways and one method is the layered approach in which the operating system is broken into a number of layers. The bottom layer which is layer 0 is hardware and the highest layer which is layer N is user interface. The main advantage of the layered approach is simplicity of construction and debugging. The layers are selected so that each uses functions and services of only lower level layers. If any error is found during the debugging of a particular layer, then the error must be on that layer because the layers below are already debugged. The problem with layered implementations is that they tend to be less efficient than the other types. For instance, when a user program executes an I.O. operation, it execute a system call that is trapped to the IO layer which calls the memory management layer which in turn calls the CPU scheduling layer which is then passed to the hardware. Now each layer adds overhead to the system call and the net result is system call takes longer than it does on a non-layered system. Microkernels. This method structures the operating system by removing all non-essential components from the kernel and implementing them as system and user level programs and the result is smaller kernel. Microkernel provides minimal process and memory management. The main function of the microkernel is to provide communication between the client program and the various services that are also running in the user space. The resulting operating system is easier to port from one hardware design to another. The microkernel also provide more security and reliability 
since most services are running as user rather than kernel processes. If any service fails, the rest of operating system remains untouched. The best current methodology for operating system design involves using loadable kernel modules. Here the kernel has a set of core components and links in additional services via modules either at the boot time or during the runtime. The idea of this design is for the kernel to provide core services while other services are implemented dynamically as the kernel is running. And linking services dynamically is preferable to adding new features directly to the kernel which would require recompilation of the kernel every time a change was made. The overall result resembles a layered system in that each kernel section has defined protected interfaces but it is more flexible than a layered system because any module can call any other module. The approach is also similar to the microkernel approach in that the primary module has core functions and knowledge of how to load and communicate with the other modules but it is more efficient because modules do not need to invoke message passing in order to communicate. Scheduling classes, file systems, loadable system calls, executable formats, stream modules, miscellaneous and device and bus drivers. Hybrid systems. In practice, very few operating systems adopt a single strictly defined structure. Instead, they combine different structures resulting in a hybrid systems that address performance, security and usability issues. Three hybrid systems are well known, the Apple Mac OS X, iOS and the Android. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, please do comment and do not forget to subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for latest updates. Thank you.